welcome to episode 86 of the Postal Hub podcast. I'm Ian Kerr. My first guest is Tian T. Mac, innovation partner at Australia Post Accelerate. We talk about Australia Post's new receiver platform and its smart mailbox. Also in this episode, Marshall Hughes, co-founder and CEO at on-demand delivery startup Parcel. But coming up in just a moment, Tian T. Mac from Australia Post. Joining me now on the Postal Hub podcast is Tian T. Mac. He is an innovation partner at Australia Post Accelerate. Welcome, T. Hey, we're going to ask, first of all, what is Australia Post Accelerate? Thank you so much, Ian. It's great to meet you. Australia Post Accelerate is uh, part of the innovation strategy at Australia Post. We are a dedicated team inside Australia Post that is working specifically with startups. So there are three things we do with startups. We incubate our own startups internally. We invest in a number of startups via a venture capital fund. And we also partner a lot with uh, a bunch of different startups that are out there. So we're going to be talking about Receiver, which is an exciting new project from Australia Post, at the risk of buttering you up (laughs) too much here. So let's start off by saying, what is Receiver and how does it fit into the Accelerate model? Right, sure. So Receiver is actually an example of one of the startups that we have incubated of late. So Receiver is essentially a platform that connects a bunch of different courier companies to a bunch of different smart receiving devices, such as a parcel box or a parcel locker located in your home or wherever it is that you happen to live. What we've also managed to do is we've, we've launched our very first product line, which is a, a smart mailbox that we've designed ourselves in order to try and illustrate and show how this platform would work and how courier companies could actually use the technology and the platform that we've created to seamlessly deliver their deliveries and parcels and packages into this particular box. So we're talking about the, an, like an at-home parcel locker? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And you just mentioned about working with courier companies. Yes. So tell us a bit about that. We, we, we've, it's an Australia Post sure. thing, and yet we're talking about career companies, which sure. I think is interesting. Tell us so about So this is one of the key things that we found through our customer research, that at the end of the day, people want to be able to receive their deliveries simply, easily, seamlessly at home, at their front door, right, in an ideal world. And in that particular situation, if somebody's going to come to your door and make that delivery, you actually don't really care which career company is coming to your door. It could be any number. It could even be the local grocery company that's just around the corner or dropping off some fresh groceries or whatever the case might be. So what we were looking for is something that would solve the consumer's need of being able to accept all of their deliveries in one simple place. From our perspective, Australia Post, of course, is right behind it. We have already committed to basically delivering all of our deliveries into the receiver smart mailbox that we've created and into any other device that's connected to the receiver network. But at the end of the day, our vision is that there could be a number of different delivery people who would have the same level of access and to be able to make that delivery into your smart mailbox at home. Well, let's just talk about some of the practical aspects of it. So it's a platform called Receiver and the, and the smart mailbox, sort of two separate things. Mm. Have I got that right? Yes. Yeah. So just talking then about the smart mailbox for a moment. So it would be integrated in with um, event management tracking system completely? Not necessarily. At the end of the day, it's really, so think of it as part of it as an extension to your home. So in the same way as your mailbox today, your regular mailbox receives all sorts of deliveries from your junk mail to your catalogs to newspapers even. The smart mailbox is kind of the next generation of what that letterbox could look like, except now it's a little bit bigger and, and size to receive a different type of good that's coming into your home, such as e-commerce packages and, and parcels that come into your home. So it's the same concept. The only thing that we've added to it is, I guess, the 21st century smarts and technology that sits behind it. So it's secure, it's weatherproof, it provides notifications to you to tell you that somebody's opened your box, that they've deposited something securely and that they've closed it, lets you know what's going on. So those are kind of the, I guess, the, the new smarts that we've embedded into this box. In a logical sense, you think about it as a, a, the smart home of the future. How would a smart home of the future receive deliveries on your behalf? And this is what we think that the journey would look like, receiver. So let's just talk a little bit about the box itself. You've been testing mm-hmm. what, about 200 sites, is that right? Probably not that many. It's a bunch of different suburbs in the southeast parts of Melbourne, about 50 postcodes or so, and we've selected a few dozen households in that area. So you've been testing it sort of, and you mentioned it's, been, it's weatherproof, and that's, yeah. a, that's a key consideration in all of this. Mm-hmm. What kind of, can you give us a rough idea without giving away trade secrets? If you can, just share a little bit about the kind of, because there's been a lot of discussion around this sorts of products, you know, whether you, how, how weatherproof you can make it sure. without installing a tank 
Let's sure. be frank. Sure. So there's a balance there. Look, I'm pretty sure if we took one of these things and dropped it into the, uh, the swimming pool, it, you know, your, your deliveries are going to get wet. That is, <laughs> <laughs> we'll try not to do that. It's in the small print. Do not drop this into <laughs> your swimming pool. pool. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly in terms of just, just regular weather, you know, in terms of uh, you know, rain and, and sunshine, okay. there's a sun shield that sits there, keeps right. you, you know, groceries cool, for example. It's designed for a bit of ventilation to make sure everything's okay. And of course, it's not going to, you know, it'll protect your, your deliveries from rain and storms and that sort of thing. So tell us now about how customers get one of these mailboxes at home. Is it a leasing arrangement? Is it outright purchase? How does it function? It's actually a subscription model. So it's probably not too dissimilar to the way people buy mobile handsets, right? So it's yeah. a subscription plan based on your usage. But we right now just have a very simple $5 a month subscription. And then you choose the device of your choice after that. And then that would be, hey, off as a once-off fee. In the same way as you choose a different type of handset, you may choose a different type of box, you know, stainless steel one or the big one or the small one, etc. And that's that's covered off as a once-off fee. So has it been launched? There's been a big announcement just recently. Is it now publicly available? Is now any member of the public can get one at home? Yes, that's right. It is now publicly available. Any member of the public in Australia, of course, can get one. We're happily taking pre-orders right now. And uh, once people get on there, we'll start uh, shipping them out uh, once they are uh, come off the uh, production line. So to speak. And not just city addresses, rural addresses can get them as well? Yeah, correct. Correct. That's right. It's available everywhere. So, and certainly at this, from our perspective, Australia Post is committed to be able to deliver into all of these boxes across Australia, wherever they may be. And then, so, so as soon as people get it and put, basically put it in a, an appropriate place in their, in their home or in their front door, etc., we'll be able to start to make deliveries to them. Now, you mentioned earlier on that receiver is not really just this box at the end at the end of the last mile it's a platform as well just tell us a little bit about how the platform works or what it is. Yeah, sure. So part of the idea behind Receiver is we recognize that there are all sorts of different types of houses and apartments and buildings everywhere that people live and work in. So one style of box is really never going to work. In the same way as we have a huge variety of different letter boxes that sit in front of everybody's houses today, we would envisage a huge variety of different parcel boxes or receptacles, as the case might be, in the future. So what we really want to be able to do, and this is where the platform aspect that comes in is to partner with a number of just about anybody really who has a great idea and a great design for a parcel box or maybe it's a smart pet flap at the bottom of your front door or something like that to enable deliveries to occur. Smart locks indeed. Smart locks, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So delivery into the home could be in the future. That's me speculating there. That's not official Australia Post policy I hasten to add. All right. Uh, look, TNT Mac, innovation partner at Australia Post Accelerate. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Ian. Joining me now on the Postal Hub podcast is Marshall Hughes. Marshall is co-founder of Parcel. Now, this is not Parcel, the American company. Marshall, is it? No, this is Parcel, the Australian. This is Parcel, the Australian company. And so how do we spell it? P-A-S-S-E-L. And we're going to get to the meaning, the hidden meaning behind the name. The hidden meaning sounds like it's been founded by the Illuminati or something like that. It's not a hidden meaning at all. You're looking at me blankly. Parcel is a collective noun for a group of people. So you could have a parcel of podcast hosts or a parcel of people shopping. Right. So we'll get to what parcel is in a second. Just uh, Marshall, quickly tell us a little bit about your background in freight, delivery, etc. Yeah, I've got 20 years freight and logistics experience. I used to work at a company called My Freight which was a freight management, freight brokerage, and freight IT company. So I was there for 20 years. And over that time, we sort of progressed from being just a broker, became a manager, and in the last few years, developed our own cloud-based freight management system. So how did you come up with the idea for Parcel? Tell us what it is and how you came up with the idea. So Parcel is for retailers. It's a crowdsourced delivery solution where we get regular people in the shopping centre to do the deliveries on their way home. And how I came up with it is that home deliveries are broken and have been broken for a long time. The experience of the retailer, the delivery person and the receiver are very poor and it's only getting worse with home deliveries exploding because of online. And a few years ago I was sitting around with my friends and I said the time will come when you're wandering around a hardware store and a message will pop up on your phone saying, hey Ian, we can see you at the hardware store, Marshall who lives next door has just ordered a shovel online, if you deliver that on your way home we'll pay you 10 bucks. And I just assumed it would happen. 
and a couple of years have gone by and it hasn't, so I've decided to do it myself. So did you give up your day job to follow the dream? I actually gave up my day job just over a year ago to coach email productivity and run a company called Email Handyman, which is actually supposed to be what I'm doing right now. Um, It's more of a lifestyle job. And after a couple of months doing that, I realized I wasn't ready for a lifestyle job. So I joined a group called the Founder Institute, which is a training program for entrepreneurs. And they basically run you through this 16-week course uh, where you decide, yes, I want to be an entrepreneur or no, please, let's take you back to nine to five straight away. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It turns out I do want to give this a shot. So let's talk about the idea then. You just mentioned it's about if you're in the shopping mall or wherever, if you've signed up for parcel, you get a message on your phone saying, hey, there's a delivery to be done. So it sounds like it's a technology-based platform but that needs what, retailers and potential delivery people? What do you call them, passes, or what do you call them? We do call them passes right. at this stage. Yeah, the, the good advice when you're doing a startup or you want to be an entrepreneur is don't go into a two-sided marketplace because then you've got to try and cater for everyone. So we have gone into a two-sided marketplace. Yeah. <laughs> so I need my retailers to be people where you can buy online. I also need retailers who can fulfill from store, which at this stage in Australia rules out about half of them who haven't yet developed that ability. And then on the other side, we need people who either work in retail or who like to spend time in shopping centres to sign up as well so that when an order becomes available, we can find the right person to do the job at a moment's notice. So just tell us how it will work in practice. So you'll be, sh- you'll be at home shopping online uh, at Pure Baby, for example, which is an organic premium cotton retailer. And one of the options in the shopping cart will be, do you want this within three hours? And you choose yes. The store then fulfills that from the closest store to your delivery address. And then when they get it ready in the store, they send a message to Parcel saying, okay, we've got one and here's the details. And we've got passes, tens of thousands of people who've registered wandering around the shopping center. And we identify the least inconvenienced person. So we're not looking for a professional career. We're not looking for a driver who's out there trying to make a living. We're looking for someone who's in the shopping center, lives next door to the delivery address and is likely to leave soon. And we send them a message saying, hey, do you want to make 10 bucks on your way home? They say yes, they go into the store and pick the item up, and on their way home, they do the delivery. So you just mentioned it's about the least inconvenienced person, so the person who's closest to the store and closest to the recipient. So there's an algorithm working all that out in the background. Yeah, you mentioned that it's a tech play, so that's where the algorithm gets smart. So how do we identify the person who's going to say yes? How do we identify the person who's going to say, for $10, that's not too much inconvenience for me to do that? So we need to know where they are, where they've been, where they're going, where they live. That's where it gets pretty complex. You mentioned that it's not about professional drivers, but about someone who's already there. So, and you mentioned it's a $10 fee. So is it a $10 fee or does it work some other way? Yeah, we're paying them with a $10 gift voucher. Ah, so a $10 gift voucher. Correct. Right. Yeah, the idea of Parcel is that the retailers are going to sell more. And one of the ways we can do that is by driving more foot traffic into their store. So potentially the gift voucher will be from the retailer that we're doing the delivery for. So suddenly you've got someone armed with a gift voucher for $10 in a bookstore. And as someone at a bookstore said, they defy anyone to walk into a bookstore with a $10 gift voucher and not come out with a book. And you know, they're going to have to pay as well because there's no book in Australia that's worth less than $10. Uh, That's correct. (laughs) So let's talk a bit about the actual idea of on-demand delivery. So you've identify that there's a need in the market. So how did you come to, I mean, obviously there's a difference between sitting around with your mates and talking about what would be a nice, cool idea, uh, as opposed to something that's gonna work in the market. Yeah, this, so one of the things the Founder Institute drummed into us was that if you're not solving a problem, you don't have a business. So the problem is that globally, when people are shopping online and they get to the shopping cart, they don't buy. 70% of people abandon the shopping cart. And when they're asked why, freight's often the reason they give. Whether it's freight's too expensive, freight's too confusing, or freight's just too slow. And in Australia and the US right now, the average fulfillment time for an online order is three to five working days. And that's okay a lot of the time. There's no rush, I'm gonna order a shirt, I don't need it for a week. But if it's four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon and you've decided you need something for that night, or it's three o'clock on Friday and you've forgotten your wife's birthday, there's a genuine need then to get something quickly. 
If you've forgotten your wife's birthday, you just need to ring a lawyer to prepare. <laughs> so, this is there a gap though in the same day delivery market or on demand delivery market in Australia? Yeah, so Australia, like every other country in the world, has abundant same day career options and, and on demand career options if you're prepared to pay for a professional driver to do the delivery. And professional drivers are earning anywhere from $25 to $50 an hour. And to do the, the process we described before, it's probably 45 minutes work for a professional driver. So if consumers were prepared to pay $35 or $40 for a home delivery, then there wouldn't be a need for this. But they're not. And in the research, it says they're prepared to pay something like $15 to $18 for that delivery. So we can't get professional drivers to do it. It's not fair to get a professional driver to do this job and only pay them 10 bucks because they're not earning enough. It's a problem Uber has run into with Uber Rush, where Uber Rush drivers are making more money doing Uber for people or Uber Eats, and they can't get them to do the career runs because they're not paying enough because the consumer won't pay enough for the delivery. So the sort of try to solve this with professional careers or even if you've got apps and part-time careers and whatever else, it doesn't solve the problem because at home, we're not going to pay $35. Yeah. So let's talk about the, I hesitate to use the word amateur, delivery fleet. First of all, how do you source them? How do you find people who are prepared to sign up? Is it just through advertising and word of mouth saying, sign up to become a parcel person? What do you do? Yeah, so people who know me will tell you that's the thing that I'm worst at is person-to-person marketing. I don't have experience. So we've tried a whole bunch of stuff and we are recruiting. People are signing on, but it's a mixture of social word of mouth, the partner retailers telling their customers they should sign on, people who work in retail and hospitality signing on. So the pool that they're coming from is um, quite an interesting one, but we've been a little bit hamstrung because we've only just got our first client, so we've only just been able to actually do deliveries, and they're not in an ideal location to source people from. Our next client is gonna be at Chadston Shopping Centre in Melbourne, which is a massive shopping centre, and we think when we do that, we'll really kick them on. Oh, you've made it when you've made it to chatty, that's for sure. Let's talk about some of the practical aspects of this, this then. And I've, I've expressed uh, scepticism when it comes to certain crowdsourced delivery models in the past because of the difference between an amateur driver and a professional driver. A professional driver has a van, insurance, competencies, and all these sorts of things. And if something goes wrong, they've got experience, insurance, as I said, and all of that. How do you approach that? under this sort of a model, what happens if, say, the person has an accident, minor, let's say, while they're doing a delivery, how do you approach all those things, such as, as I said, you know, insurance, change in vehicle use and all of that? So the first thing we need to say is I'm not a lawyer, but I actually like how you phrase them as amateurs because they really are amateurs. So this is more like doing an online survey or doing a survey in a shopping mall than it is actually being a courier or a delivery driver. The first thing is that people don't have to do multiple deliveries on their way home, so they're only doing one. So the actual only time they're really doing our delivery is when they get out of the car in front of the property Mm -hmm. and then go and do the delivery. So our actual risk from a, I don't know what the best word is. Slip, trips and falls or or marine cargo, damage the goods while they're in transit. It's essentially from when they get out of the car until they cross into the property of the delivery address. So that's our area of responsibility there. So I'm not really worried about that, and no one I've spoken to in the legal profession or in for actual people have expressed a worry about that. The most common question about risk and security is about what happens if Ian, who I has signed up to be a passer, absconds with a pair of you know, Nike runners or something. And in that case, we're actually offering the retailers a guarantee delivery. So we're not going to charge them unless delivery is accomplished, even if that means we have to buy a replacement and send it out with someone else. So you've been running the company for how long now? So I've been working on Parcel for a year and we started doing deliveries on the 25th of September from a store called Pookie Poiga. Good grief, Pookie Poiga. Pookie Poiga. So there's a, there's a special place in heaven for business owners who will give a startup a chance. Pookie Poiga is a little store in Bridge Road, Richmond in Melbourne. And they do quirky and nice gifts and whatever else. And they said, we'd like to give this a shot. So we've kicked it off with them. And so from the plan is to keep rolling out to more retailers, keep signing up more passes. 
Yeah. Yeah, correct. So the next step is we're in talks with a store called Pure Baby, who do organic, premium organic clothing. They've got stores at Chadston and all the major shopping centres. And they've got the online as well, haven't they? And the online. So we're really keen to kick off with them, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And that's when we'll start running. Look, we're recording this now and it's the end of October. So we're into the horror time for retailers. We're pretty happy if we run Pure Baby through to Christmas as our only client, because it'll give us a chance to prove it to everyone else that we can do it. And then come January, we'll have the case studies. We can go and talk to our very conservative retail prospects and say, look, it works. Now let's give it a shot. It'll be exciting to see if this sort of on-demand delivery takes off in Australia. We're seeing it already happening in the UK and in the US. It'll be interesting to see how we go. Yeah, we are a little bit... Australia's probably a little bit behind where the rest of the world is. But we think this is a real opportunity to make it work here and then we can take Parcel worldwide and show them how it's done. There you go. You heard it here first. Parcel going worldwide. Maybe not this week, but <laughs> sooner or later. Marshall Hughes, co-founder, CEO of Parcel. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much, Dan. That's all for this episode of the Postal Hub podcast. Make sure you never miss an episode. Sign up for the Postal Hub e-newsletter. Head on over to thepostalhub.com and you can sign up there. It's a free weekly update with the latest podcast and any other bits and pieces I've posted during the week. And if you're on iTunes, remember you can subscribe to the podcast through iTunes. Get the latest episode downloaded to the device of your choosing each week. And for those of you on iTunes, please do leave us a review and a rating. It'd be great if we saw a few more reviews and ratings up there on iTunes. If you're on LinkedIn, send me an invitation to connect. Always great to hear from listeners to the Postal Hub. Just when you send that invitation to connect, include a little note just to say that you're a Postal Hub listener and I'll almost certainly say yes to your invitation to connect. And if you want to contact me about anything at all, just drop me an email. Ian at thepostalhub.com is the email address. I'm Ian Kerr. Thanks for listening in and I look forward to your company next time on the Postal Hub podcast.